When Runway Aleph dropped just a short while ago, it absolutely blew our minds. For the first time in history, you could have a conversation with AI and it would change the dynamics of your videos. Not only was this an incredibly interesting tool for the AI filmmaking community, it also is ushering in a brand new era in the way in which we create our films. So after testing out the tool and taking a look at some of the amazing generations from the community, we wanted to do a roundup of some of our favorite ways to use Runway Olive. Let's get to it. So in front of me is the Runway website, and to use Olive, all you have to do is go to the Get Started button, and at the time of recording, it is actually going to default to Runway Olive. You can tell because we have it in chat mode here. So basically, we're having a conversation with Runway rather than using the one-off applications to generate the videos or perform other video tasks, like if you've worked with Runway in the past. Now for our first example, I want to take a look at clothing replacement. And let me set the stage. Let's say that we shot some video of this woman walking down the street, but we want to change her outfit in some sort of way. Well, it's actually really easy using Olive. All you have to do is go to the plus icon and select your media. So we have this video footage here. We'll go ahead and bring that into Runway. And the cool thing is, you basically can just have a conversational experience with Runway. So we can say, give this woman in the video a black leather coat. And when you're ready, all you have to do is go ahead and click generate. Now, there are a few things that you should know when you're using this tool. The first is the clips can't be more than five seconds long. If you do upload a video clip that's longer than five seconds, basically it'll just crop the first five seconds and that will be what's generated inside of the tool. That's usually not a very big deal. Most of the time when you're working on a film project, you're not going to have too many shots that are longer than five seconds. The second thing to note is that the generations simply take a little longer than what you're probably familiar with if you've used other tools like Runway, Vio, or Clink. Most of the generations take at least five minutes long, and it really depends on the shot. And every now and then, some shots will simply throw error codes, and it's not entirely clear why. So you may be working on a project and shot number two of a seven shot sequence may get messed up and you really will have no understanding as to why. It can be a frustrating experience, but generally speaking, it does a good job with most of the assets that you upload. So after about five minutes, we have our generation here from Runway and let's take a look at this video. And I gotta say, every single time I use this tool, it blows my mind. Now, the first thing that I should note is this specific shot is really good for a tech demo of this technology. Not only is it kind of backlit and dark. She also is wearing a leather coat, which is kind of plasticky. And sometimes whenever you are adding in assets into your AI videos, the assets can look a bit plasticky. And so we're kind of just playing into the strengths of the AI tool in this instance. So let's say that we like this clip from Runway. The cool thing is you actually have the ability to upscale to 4K directly inside of Runway. All you have to do is click that button and it will upscale the video to your computer. So let's take a look at this clip here. And honestly, I think it did an amazing job. I'm having a really hard time finding an issue with this video clip. So it's an incredible result from Olive. Now let's say that we want to be very specific about what this woman is wearing. Well, the cool thing is using this technology, you can upload other assets to support the generations that you are trying to get from Olive. So let's go back into Olive and we will add our media here. And so we have our original video and then we also have this red dress. So let's go ahead and bring both of those assets inside of Olive and we'll go ahead and paste a prompt that says, put this red dress on the woman and go ahead and click generate. And after a few minutes, we have this result here. And I think it did again, a really good job. Obviously the red dress, I think is a little bright given the color grade of the source footage, but it's a really good start and a very easy fix inside of most video editing applications. So for our next example, we were really inspired by some incredible examples online of people doing objects 
object removal, so we wanted to test it out for ourselves. We're going to use this footage here of this person holding a seashell, and let's say we want to add in some sort of mythical blue glowing rock. So we have this fake stone that we generated inside of Midjourney. Let's go ahead and bring both of these assets into Olive, and we will say swap the shell for the glowing rock. And after a few seconds, we get this generation here, and it really is incredible how the tool understands the lens dynamics. If you look around the edges of that rock, you'll see there's a bit of haze from the bokeh as the camera focus begins to fall off on the edge of that rock. And you'll also see there's some illuminance from the light coming through the blue stone, which just helps to sell the overall compositing. So it did a really good job. Now, I do want to note that this specific shot, and it's really hard to tell on YouTube, has a film grain over it that didn't exactly get translated into the rock asset that the person is holding inside of their hand. So if you're working on this in a professional context, you may want to rotoscope in some film grain that can just help sell the overall compositing. If you remember back to last week's AI film news, you may remember that Dave Clark shared an example where he generated one shot from behind a subject and then essentially used Olive to generate other angles to that shot. Well, I want to show you how to do that for yourself because I think reframing and getting different shots is one of the most impressive uses of this technology. So we have this shot here of this person sitting on a horse and I can tell that it was generated, I believe in Runway Gen 3 because there's a slight jitter in the background. And I don't know if the stock footage website knows that this was AI generated, which is pretty funny, but we'll go ahead and bring that into Olive. And let's say reframe the shot to be a close up on the horse and go ahead and click generate. And if you take a look here at the close up, you can see we have the horse and the character riding the horse. And the thing that's really interesting is it's very good at visual continuity. If you had to reprompt the close up in a secondary tool like Midjourney, it might be challenging to get the same color grading, the same characters exactly in the same shot, but it did an amazing job using Olaf. Next up, we came across some really cool examples of people using Olaf as a grayscale render engine. So essentially taking very basic 3D shapes and rendering it using the technology to create high-end visual effects. So we have this grayscale render here of this liquid, but let's say that we want to make the entire thing red and slightly translucent. So let's go ahead and bring that asset into Olaf. And for our prompt, we'll say, turn this liquid into translucent red water. So we're going for, uh, I guess, like a shining elevator thing and go ahead and click render. And you can see it did an amazing job with the render. Not only does it understand the color prompting that we added in, it's also doing a bit of refraction with the way the lighting is coming through the liquid. So it's doing some pretty advanced render techniques all through the power of AI. You can also use Olive to relight your shots, whether you're looking to change the lighting environment or even the time of day. So let's take a look at a quick example here. So I have three different shots here. Essentially, we have a woman holding headphones, putting them on, and then a shot of her looking at her phone. And this was shot during the day. But let's say that we want it to happen in the evening or kind of in a warm magic hour environment. Well, all we have to do is select our shot. And then you also can define the way in which you want your lighting to look based on an image. So we went to Midjourney and got this image here. So you can see it's very warm, it's backlit, just, you know, feels like a very warm, dramatic scene. And let's go ahead and bring in our shot and our image asset. And we'll say relight this scene based on the lighting from the photograph. So let's take a look at our result. So we have all three shots. Here's number one. You can see it has that lighting from behind. Here's shot number two. I actually like how it understands that the lighting is behind the person, so it looks a little more natural. And then we have the final shot here. Again, it did a really good job. Now there is one thing that I do want to call out in this specific shot. If you look at the sticky note here, the words that were written down really begin to fall apart because it's just fine details. Again, 
Olive is generating its results in a lower res format and you're upscaling to 4K. And when you do that upscale process, you're going to lose a bit of information that might have been present in the original video. So it's all a part of the process. You may need to do some specific masking and coloring if there are certain details that need to be really sharp. But again, that's really not a super challenging process. And if you want to learn more about that, be sure to check out our AI VFX course over at Curious Refuge. We partnered up with industry legend Ryan Reeb to create an incredible course that shows you the latest AI VFX techniques. And the best part is you don't have to have experience as a VFX artist to create incredible things. There's a link below this video if you're interested in learning more. So we have a few final examples I want to show you. So let's get to example number six, turning on the lights. So this is pretty interesting and I gotta admit a little niche, but one of the cool things that you can do with Olaf is actually describe and select the lighting that you want to change inside of your scene. So for example, in this shot here, you can see we have that lamp in the background, but the lamp isn't really on. The lighting is actually coming from off screen, but let's say we want to brighten up that lamp to make it look a bit more natural. Well, let's go ahead and bring that into Olive, and I'll type in the very complex prompt of turn the lamp on and go ahead and click generate. And now we have this shot here and you can see it did a really good job. It turned the lamp on in a very natural way. And one of the things I really like from this generation is the fact that if you look at the lamp, there's a lot of the natural texturing that you would want to see on a textile lamp like that. Because a lot of times whenever you are working with AI tools, whether it's in generating the AI video asset or in other tools that do multimodal editing experiences like this, the kind of finer details get lost, especially when you're working with light. So I normally would have expected that to be completely blown out and honestly really distracting. But the fact that it's very natural and subdued really speaks to the strength of Olive. Our next example is pretty wild. So using Olive, you can change the time of day in which your footage was shot. So let's say we're working on a war film and we have this night here. And of course, it looks really cool, but let's say that we actually want this scene to happen at sunset. Well, all we have to do is bring the image into Olive and we'll say change the lighting in this scene to sunset. Of course, you could bring in your own asset if you wanted to, to be very specific about the color grade and the time of day, but we'll be fairly generic for now and go ahead and click render. And after a few seconds, we have this generation here. And honestly, this is one of the more incredible AI VFX shots that I've seen. Obviously, it's a bit more of a subtle change. The lighting does look very natural, but it understands the way in which shadows should be affecting the arm and it understands the way in which the haze interacts with the dust. So obviously you can use this technology to change your shots from day to night. And it's so much more advanced than whenever I was in film school and we used just those screw on gels <laughs> for day to night conversion and it never looked really that good. So it's a really cool technique inside of Olive. Next up, we have object removal. So we have this shot here of this guy basically walking into a subway and let's say we want to remove the graffiti. Well, all you have to do is prompt in remove the graffiti and go ahead and click render. And after a few minutes, we have this shot here. And again, it did a really good job at adding in the texturing. Now, obviously, especially the character does seem a bit soft. And so in this instance, again, I think you may want to go in and rotoscope and basically create a mask over the part of your scene that was modified. But generally speaking, this is so much easier than the old school method of having to go in and track and add in an object and connect it to the tracking point. That's all stuff that you typically would use After Effects or Nuke to accomplish. And it's simply time consuming and really tricky to pull off. And our final example is changing the weather. So we have this shot here of this person just touching a tree, so tranquil. Well, let's say that we want this to be in the rain. Well, that's actually super easy. All we have to say is convert this scene to a rainy day and go ahead and click render. 
And that gives us this result here, and it looks pretty darn good. Now, you may want to re-render a few times because there are some issues with the shot. Namely, if you kind of look at the person's arm, the way the water is affecting their arm, it does come across again as a bit plasticky or like a Venom symbiote or something like that. But the cool thing is when you work inside of Runway Olive, it will create a new seed for every generation so that you get a different result every time. So there you go. There's a few fun ways to use Runway way all of inside of your film projects. If you have any examples that you would like to share with the community, we would love to see them in the comments of this video. And of course, if you want to stay up to date on the latest AI film news, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter by visiting CuriousRefuge.com. You can click the blue button in the top right corner and you'll get a free AI filmmaking course for signing up. We would love to meet you inside of our chat channel. And as always, you can like and subscribe here on YouTube to get the latest tutorials and news directly here on the platform. Thank you so much for watching this video. We will see you in the next one.